G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another Unity video. We're going to be looking at game objects, sort of what they are, and how to create them and sort of manipulate them a bit. Okay, so to start with, a game object is anything that goes inside your scene view. So this is something the user might be able to see, like a cube or a model or something like that. It also could be something that's functional without a look, such as a light or even a camera. And there is such a thing as an empty game object. I did sort of touch on that in a previous video, but I will talk about it in this one. So creating game objects, you could do in a number of ways, okay? There are built-in ones that you could use up here. There are also other game objects you can make like meshes and 3D objects that you could import in and music. But for the moment, let's just have a look at the built-in ones and get used to them. So you can create empty objects, 3D ones, 2D, light objects, audio, user interface, particle system, and camera objects, okay? So let's just focus on creating some 3D ones for the moment. I'm gonna click on cube. You'll notice that it puts the cube sort of smack bang in the middle of my scene view, not really in the middle of my world. You'll see the values don't really indicate it's in the middle of the world. If it was, it'd be zero, zero, zero. But what I can do now is I could just move them around like any other thing in the world, okay? Using the scale tool, I could scale him up. And you can do this with basically any object in your game, okay? Because every object in the world, or game object, I should say, has a scale a rotation and a position value. Now you'll probably notice I move between these tools pretty quickly and I'm not going up here to select them. That's because I'm using the shortcut keys. Now, I didn't explain this in the last video and I realized that afterwards. The shortcut is Q for the pan tool, okay, like so, W for the move tool, E for rotate, R for scale, T for the sprite tool. So it basically just works its way across the first letters of your keyboard. All right, so that's pretty much the easiest way to remember it. All right, let's make some more 3D objects. The second way you can create objects is down here in the hierarchy, and I've done this previously. But first of all, before I create one, I'm gonna left click to make sure the cube is not selected, right click, and then go down here. And you'll see that it's the same options you get up here in the game object menu, but like a few at the bottom were missing. So you could make a sphere, and hello, there's a sphere. We could create capsules, why are they going down there? That's weird. I'm going to move my cube. There we go. There's my capsule. Cylinders, like so. And then we've got planes. And I want to talk about this guy because he's quite interesting, okay? One thing you'll notice, he's flat, okay? That's probably not that interesting, but bear with me. Let's move him up above that grid. Okay. So with planes, one thing you might notice is they've got lots and lots of blue lines on these guys. And if, I'm just gonna turn my grid off for a second, it's annoying me. If I click on the cube, you'll notice he's only got one blue line straight through the middle. And what this means, if you know anything about 3D graphics, you may have heard of polygons. And the way to think of a polygon is it's a triangle, all right? And what you'll notice is there's two triangles that make up one side of a cube. Now you'll see that on every single side of a cube. When I click on the plane, he's got tons of it. So what this means is the plane is really detailed when it comes to how many polygons it's got. So that makes it really handy for very detailed objects and things like that. If I go under the plane, you'll notice something as well. He's invisible. He has no back face. And the idea is a plane, you will only ever want to see the front of it, okay? If a player ever goes behind it, it's going to be invisible and they'll never see it. And this saves on memory because I'm only rendering that many polygons and I'm not adding double the amount on the other side okay so it's really handy that you can only see one side of the plane now generally you'll use this for like things in the distance or walls in a corridor where you cannot ever go behind them okay so the idea is to reduce the amount of memory your game is using by using these kind of objects the next one is called a quad and he's the same thing as our plane okay you'll see He's flat, if I go behind him, he has no back face, okay? But he's about as detailed as the cube. He's only got two polygons. He hasn't got as many as the plane. So a quad would be used for a similar thing as the plane, but just for less detailed work, all right? Now I'm not gonna go through the rest of the 3D objects. I think a lot of these probably warrant their own video, but you can play with them if you want to later on. Let's go to 2D objects. We can only create one 2D object and that's a sprite. If I click on that, you'll notice it's empty there is no 2D object to look at, okay? And that's because it wants to know what picture you want to give it, all right? So over here, you'll see it's got a, pr a sprite setting, okay? And it currently says none. I can either drag a 2D picture into that spot just by bloop, like so. 
or I can use the circle selector to choose from anything. Now, all these assets, by the way, people, I've gotten from the standard assets. So I've just imported the 2D library of assets. Okay. Now, the sprite is the exact same thing. We can move it, we can rotate it, and we can scale it. Okay. It probably looks and works a little bit easier in the 2D mode. Okay. Because you can use the sprite tool a bit more effectively. Okay. Let's drag in a sprite strip. Now, this guy has already been set up by the Unity. Um, what do I say? The Unity crew, I guess. If I drag him in, you'll see that it only drags in one of those pictures. And I can create a new animation. Yep, whatever. And he is an animated sprite. So you can create sprites by making them new here or just dragging them in from down here. Okay, and that's pretty much how the 2D objects work. They're really good. And I think Unity has actually done a great job of making that a really easy process to get sprites in. It's a little bit fiddly when you get to things like sprite strips where you've got multiple pictures in one. But I'm going to do a whole video on that later on. The only real objects I want to talk about from now, because, well, actually, we'll talk about lights, and then we'll talk about the empty objects as well. So there's three types of lights that I like to focus on. You've got directional, point, and spot. I won't talk about the area lights in this video. We'll do that later on. But the directional light. In a 3D game, you always start with a directional light. And he's right here. Okay. You cannot see him. He does not render anything. So they use a gizmo to show him. You'll notice when I move him around, he's like a sun. Okay. The idea is he provides light all over your world. All right. The other thing to think about is when I move him, you'll see that nothing changes. The, the shadows don't change. The light intensity don't change. Anything like that. Okay. The thing that changes the direction a lot is its rotation. If I move him around the y-axis, that changes the shadow directions within my world. Okay, you'll see everything is casting a shadow pretty much if it's got a shadow caster on it. Okay, if I change his Z axis, you'll see it sort of changes the time of day all the way to sort of night time. X is very similar to this reflect. It just changes the weight or the angle that it moves. Okay, so that's really handy. So if you want to create like a daytime effect, I'm going to change that to local. If you want to create a daytime effect, you can just simply change the x-axis and it's automatically going to go to night time and then it'll come back anyway just something to play around with later on so that's the second type of light I'm going to delete this one before I show the second one lost all our light you also notice we've got an ambient light we're not going to talk about that in this video though spotlight exactly how it sounds it's in a spot and you'll see this big yellow sphere that is how big the light is it's just a big sphere of light so moving closer to things, they're going to light up a bit more. And I can change the intensity and the range of it, okay, depending on what you want to do. So this would be good for things like lamps without, you know, um, what do you call them? Shades? Is that the word I'm looking for? Probably not. But anyway, if you can correct me on that, that'd be awesome. So essentially, that's an, an, uh, a point light. The third type of light, the spotlight, liken him to a torch. Okay, you'll see he's got a cone when he gets close to things. Where is he? Get out of there. He's just got one spot that he lights up. So again, I can change the range. I can change the spot angle, which makes him wider. I can change the intensity. Okay, but notice by default, it doesn't cast any shadows. And that's the same with the area light. If I want, I can change the shadow type to shadows. Just bear in mind, the more shadows you add in your game the more intensive it becomes on the GPU, right? So it's probably not a good idea to do lots of shadows throughout like mobile games and things like that. All right, and that's basically it for the lights. The last couple of things we'll have a look at is just the empty ones and sub objects. So an empty object is exactly how it sounds. It's got nothing in it. So you might ask, why the hell would you want an empty game object? There's two reasons. The first one is you don't want anything rendered to the screen. But you might want to add a script to it which handles the enemy AI or something like that. Okay, that's why you would use empty game objects. The second reason you might use them is to create sub objects that are attached to this object. So I'm going to create a weird enemy character for this example. I'm going to create a cube. All right, hello, Mr. Enemy. And let's give him some eyes and a mouth. Now keep cube one selected. If you right click, what this is going to do is add it. Add this object as a sub-object of cube 1, like so. You'll see that sphere is underneath cube 1, and if I collapse this arrow, sphere is still there, he's just hidden. All right. 
With the um, sphere selected, I can actually still move him around. So I can grab him, I can scale him, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to use a bit of an eyeball. Like so. Bit weird, but anyway. And the reason you would do something like this is because now if I move the cube, it moves with it. Same with rotating and scaling. Okay, so if the parent changes, so cube one is the parent, sphere is the child. If you move or scale the parent, all the children act accordingly. Okay, I can still add more game objects underneath cube one, like so. I'm going to select cube one again and add a mouth. Okay, scale it right down, rotate him, move him forward. It's a bit more of a nose, but anyway. Okay. And then let's say I actually wanted to create some teeth for this weird mouth, okay? I could actually right-click on Capsule and add more things. So now you'll see that Cube is a child of Capsule. So I'm making even more sub-objects, okay? It's like grandchildren in that respect. Okay, let's go make it long, make it squishy. I'll give him some buck teeth because I can. Duplicate. A little bit weird, but why not? So now if I decide I want to rescale the mouth or move the mouth, those teeth go with it. Now, it's a really good idea to get used to doing these sub-objects because later on, you're probably going to organize most of your game within these sub-objects, okay? But that pretty much brings us to the end of our video for the everybody. In the next video, I still want to talk about game objects, but in a little bit of a different way, we're going to be looking at what's called prefabs. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. If you'd feel like it down the bottom, I'd love to hear from people. But otherwise, I'll see you later.